This week I'm going to demonstrate six traditional studio lighting setups. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. We'll be getting a lot of questions about studio lighting and specifically for more lighting setups. So this week we're going to dive into that. In fact, we've got a question from Brad in Nashville, Tennessee. And Brad asked, can you explain what broad and short light means? Well, Brad, absolutely. Broad and short light actually come from traditional lighting setups that people have used for generations. And there are several different types of light. There's broad light, short light, loop light, closed loop, butterfly, and Rembrandt light. And what we're gonna do is, instead of me talking to you about what these are, I'm going to show you. And so we're gonna bring a model into the studio and we're gonna go through each of these traditional lighting setups. So let's get started. All right, let's start by talking about two very traditional forms of light, that is broad light and short light. Now, to understand these types of light, we have to understand a couple of things. The first is the relationship between our main light, or our key light, that's that light right there, and the camera. So we've intentionally hidden Sam, our model, behind this camera because we're assuming, I'm gonna move this in a second, but we're assuming at all times that you, what you're seeing, is the position of the camera. And so where we position this light has to be in a specific relationship to where this camera position is. So, so we're not gonna hide Sam this whole time. I'm gonna move this camera, but we understand that we're positioning our light in relationship to where the camera should be. Now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna zip back here. We're gonna introduce you to Sam. This is Sam, our model. And uh, Sam is positioned in a very specific way. And to illustrate everything, we're gonna kill our ambient lights here. And so uh, we can see exactly what our studio light is doing. Now notice Sam isn't facing exactly at the camera. She has her face turned just a little bit and that allows us to see basically two different sides of her face. The broad side, which is the side that's toward the camera, that's the majority of her face. And then there's the short side. This is this thin side over here that's away from the camera. And so these two terms, broad and short lighting, come from which side of her face we're lighting. So broad lighting is simply placing a light in a position to light the side that is facing the camera. And we'll take a couple pictures and show you what this looks like. The cool thing is you can do broad lighting with a standard reflector, which we're using now, or you can use all kinds of different reflectors, like a, uh, an umbrella or a softbox or all kinds of different things to get different looks. You can also add a second light to fill in some of the shadows on the opposite side of her face, or just use a reflector to do that. So we're gonna take a few pictures and show you different uh, looks, all of them using broad lighting. All right, our next lighting setup, we've already set it up and taken some pictures, so we're gonna do this backwards to show you how short lighting works. So you, so you can see Sam, I'm gonna move the camera once again, so now she appears back there. Um, and what we've done here, I'm also gonna move this big umbrella. This was our fill light, I'll bring it back out here in a second. The really uh, important thing to understand is where the key light is in relationship to our model. Now remember, we have broad light, which shows the broad side of the face, and then short light. And so what we had is Sam was looking to the uh, right over here, to your right, and so this is the broad side of her face. This is the short side this time. And so what I did was I put a small softbox on the short side of her face from behind. And what that does is that gives a really strong uh, highlights on the short side of her face. Now normally this is used when we're shooting men because they're sort of rugged and you can get some really high contrast looks. In fact, here's a shot that we shot just with the softbox and nothing else. And you can see the broad side of her face falls completely into darkness. So I didn't like that. So what I did was I took an umbrella, which is this guy right here. And I'm not gonna put it exactly in a place, but I moved it to the opposite side of her. And then I also added a light behind, I'm not sure you can see this, but I added a light to uh, illuminate the background to sort of round out this portrait so it's a little bit more pleasing for a model like Sam because we don't want her to be rugged, we want her to be nice and soft and pretty. And so we used this uh, short side of her face, short light to give some really cool highlights 
Then we filled in on the broad side of her face with a large umbrella, and then we popped some light onto the background to get the portrait that you see now. Okay, well next up, let's talk about loop and closed loop lighting. Now loop and closed loop lighting can be based on broad or short light, and it's all about the shadows underneath your model's nose. So I'm gonna go back here, and we're gonna turn off our big light right there so it'll get a little bit darker. But what we're looking at is this shadow right here under our model's nose, and we really care where it lies. So it's going to be opposite our key light, so it's gonna fall right above the lip and over on the cheek. Now loop light, this shadow is not allowed to come all the way across the cheek and touch the other shadow because if it does, that's closed loop light. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this uh, key light here just so you can see this. So we don't want this to be too far across without touching because that looks a little bit awkward. But if we keep moving our light to the opposite side of our model's face, you can see that we get a nice closed loop. Now we also care about how high or low that shadow is. So I'm gonna move my uh, light back here. If I have my light too low, see how that shadow creeps up on her cheek? And so this is too high. We wanna lower that. And to lower that, we raise the light. So when we raise the light, you can see how that falls. When we lower it, it climbs. So we want that to be low, but not too low to make her look sort of sad. And we can move this light around to get a nice pleasing light. So I'm going to play with that. We're going to show you a few examples of closed loop and normal loop lighting, and we'll show you how you can get some really interesting effects and great looks. All right, one more word about loop and closed loop lighting, and that is that if you change the position of your camera or if your model changes the position of her face, it's going to change the position of the shadow. For example, right now we have loop lighting, but if Sam looks to her right over here, look at that, it's changing those shadows. If she looks to the left, it's changing those shadows again. So you really have to pay close attention not only to how your model is looking, but where you are in relationship to your model because if you move your camera, you're gonna see different parts of the model's face. And if she moves her face to follow you, it's gonna change all those shadows. So make sure you pay close attention to that. Well, next up we have Rembrandt light. And Rembrandt light is named after the famous painter, Mr. Rembrandt. And the story goes that when Rembrandt was painting, he was in this sort of dingy studio, and all he had for light was this window that was sort of high up on the wall, and it cast a very certain type of light and shadows. So we're going to mimic that here with a small soft box right up here, and that's casting light on the uh, right side of Sam's face. But the distinguishing feature of Rembrandt light is this triangle that you'll see here in a second that is cast on the opposite side, right on the cheek. Now one of the things before we show you this, we're gonna cut off the ambient light here in a second, but before we do that, there's something that's very important when you're uh, trying to figure out where to put this light. Normally, it's at about a 45 degree angle from the camera, and then it's elevated just enough to give us that triangle, but not too much so that we have dark shadows under the eyes, because if we have that, well, then your model is gonna look a little bit sinister. So if you start getting shadows underneath the eyes, you need to lower that light just a little bit. All right, we're gonna kill the ambient light so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And we have this triangle of light that I mentioned earlier, and that is what Rembrandt light is. So we're gonna take a few shots and show you some examples of Rembrandt light. Well, last but not least, we have my favorite style of lighting from the traditional lighting style, so that's called butterfly light. Now, butterfly light is named from the shadow that's cast underneath the nose. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna kill this ambient light really quick. 
and you can see that there's just this very small shadow that's underneath Sam's nose. And depending on the shape of the nose, that can be wider or skinnier. And if you have a wider nose, it looks a little bit like a butterfly. So we're gonna kick back on the ambient lights. Now the neat thing about butterfly light is that you have all kinds of options. Now to set up butterfly light, you just set a light directly above the camera and down onto your model. It's very, very simple. It gives you a low contrast uh, sort of lighting setup. Now with this, if we shot, we would have a big shadow underneath Sam's chin. But what I can do is I can really quickly grab another reflector and just stick this right underneath here and bounce some light underneath her chin. I can use all kinds of light modifiers. I can use a small softbox, a large softbox, a huge umbrella, and we'll get all kinds of really awesome looks. Now usually this is made for beauty photography or nice tight headshots. So we're gonna shoot a few with different light modifiers to show you how easy butterfly lighting is to use and how awesome it looks. All right, well, thank you so much, Sam. That was a lot of fun. Now, before we go, there's something I have to mention, and that is with all of these different lighting styles, these are just starting points. And so you can take your basic, maybe broad light or short light, and then add in a secondary light, a third light to add some kicker and hair light and all that different kind of stuff to make the portrait that you want. So we've kept these very simple so you can see exactly what we're talking about for each lighting setup, but in reality, Probably most of these are not complete lighting setups. We'd need to add some fill light, add some separation light, and do some things to make these uh, more pleasing portraits. And so when you're uh, making comments, please understand that we realize these are not finished portraits. We're just trying to light this so you can see exactly where the shadows are falling and how you can shape light. Well, there you have it, Brad, all the different traditional lighting setups. Well, for more information about studio lighting tips, don't forget to check out other videos that we've created. Episode 23 talks about the basic three light setup, and you really need to know this to do any kind of studio lighting. And then there's episode 27 through 28, and we talk a lot about using a light meter. In fact, we show you exactly how to use a light meter. And then if you're interested in high key or low key lighting, check out episode 42. And don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center because we have hundreds of videos about photography and thousands of articles, and it's all free. Yep, it's totally free, so make sure you check it out. And also, you can help me create even more videos by sending me your questions about photography. Just send your questions to askmark at adorama.com, and I just might use it on an upcoming episode. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Triangle of light that is opposite the uh, where the blah, 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 blah. and that is what Rembrandt writing lighting. Sorry. All right. Well, now let's talk about loop and open loop lighting. So before we go on, I cannot see the camera at all. Digital photography one on one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit SnapFactory.com. <laughs>